as the same shall become due. Nine, that all resolutions or parts of resolutions in conflict herewith shall be and the same are rescinded. This resolution is number 2013-021, Fire Protection Special Assessment District, following the Special Assessment Rule Notice of Public Hearing. Whereas the Township Board has tentatively determined the amount of $163,746.25 will be required to provide fire protection in the Township for the coming tax year, $163,746.25 of this amount being estimated to be necessary for operation and maintenance of the fire department. And whereas the Township Board has determined that it is in the best interest of the Township to proceed to defray the cost of maintaining and operating the fire department by special assessment on all the lands and premises of the Township to be benefited, except for lands and premises exempt from the collection of taxes under the General Property Tax Act, 206 of the Public Acts of Michigan, Michigan 1893 exempt properties, and whereas the supervisor has prepared, certified, and reported to this township board a special assessment role for the parcel of property benefited by the fire department and located in the fire protection special assessment district, showing the amount of the levy as it appeared in the column provided in the regular tax rule. Now, therefore, be it hereby resolved as follows, that the Special Assessment Role for the Fire Protection Special Assessment District, the Special Assessment Role, as reported to the Township Board by the Supervisor, shall be filed in the Office of the Township Clerk and shall be available for public inspection during the normal working hours of the Township Office. Two, that the Township Board shall hold a public hearing on September 9th 2013 at 7 p.m. at the Township Hall located at 5833 East Division Street, Nuevo, Michigan, in the Township to review and hear any objection to the estimated costs and expenses and the distribution of the levy on special assessment roll. Three, that the Township Clerk shall cause to be published a notice of hearing and the filing of special assessment roll in the River Valley Shop a newspaper of general circulation within the township at least five days prior to the public hearing. Proofs of publication of such notice shall be filed with the township clerk. Four, that the township clerk at least 10 days prior to the date of the public hearing shall send a notice of the public hearing by first class mail addressed to each record owner or party in interest of each parcel of property to be assessed at the address shown for such owner or property in interest upon the last township tax assessment record, as supplemented by any subsequent changes in names or address of the owners or parties listed herein, except in the case of railroad companies who shall be mailed a notice of the public hearing by registered mail. Five, that the notice of the hearing to be mailed and published pursuant hereto shall substantially in the form set forth in Exhibit A hereto. Five, excuse me, six, that all resolutions or parts of resolutions in conflict herewith shall be the same are hereby rescinded to the extent of such conflict.
now we'll open the Redwood Township Board meeting and approve of the consent agenda. Minutes for August 12, 2013. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. And I'll second it. The bills, all in favor. And then uh, we'll make a motion to approve the bills as presented by the clerk. I'll make a motion to approve the bills as presented by the clerk. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> No there will not be a treasurer's report tonight. I deal with tax. Everybody's bringing their taxes today. So the report is not prepared. Okay. Um, I don't know of any correspondence that we have. I have not received any. So no agenda changes. Any petitions? Okay. Public comments on the agenda. Okay, we'll move on to the Department of Reports. Hank Brown. You always start with me. <laughs> um, the big thing with Camp Brown was Labor Day weekend. I think all we had to put up was five sites. And I believe that was all we were in the criminal area. Plus we had, uh, the night before, uh, let's see, uh, Saturday night we had uh, karaoke down there and then Sunday night we had uh, the band called Lukewarm and the Not So Hots. And uh, <laughs> then we had Sandra Bernard came up out of Luego. And don't let this name fool you, these guys are super. I mean, you're talking about guys that work for Dolly Parton. Anyway, it was a super weekend. We didn't have any incidents. Nothing bad happened. We didn't have to have anybody arrested or anything. So anyway, uh, at the school, we've been doing our boiler testing. That's all finished, so the school's ready to turn the boiler on and they can uh, get it warm. But the one thing that I've noticed around here is at the cemeteries, we've been having some thefts out there. So if I was a person that had uh, flowers out there, I would put my name in them or duct tape them to the bottom or super glue them, I don't know what. They stole every flower out at St. Mary's Cemetery. There was a $70 arrangement out there, brand new. Oh. It was only there one day. And they took every flower, even the growing ones, and then at Oak Grove, we're getting stuff so stolen also. So I do have a few cameras around, so if anybody's out there way you have the camera. And then one thing that I used to be on was the Emerald Ash Borer. I was on that, and I was also on the uh, butterfly thing with the, uh, what was those? Target book. I don't know which one, but anyway, I noticed around here, and everybody's kind of forgot about the Emerald Ash Borer until I saw our tree right here. That is the door now, and it's full of their sign. Mike Starr's house has them dead, so anybody that's got ash trees here better prepare themselves because they're going to lose them all. I would cut them down now, but all the trees have holes in them right now. That's a D-shaped hole, and you can identify them very, real easy. So I think that I don't know what we can do about it. Cut the trees down, I guess. Anyway, that's my report. Transfer station? Um, well, we're well, we're in the transfer station. We did have uh, oh, clean up days. Clean up days this yeah. Saturday. Um, Eight till five, I think. Zoning department. Tina gets to give the report. Yeah. Okay. Um, we had six zoning applications since the last meeting. We've only had a couple of complaints, nothing real big. Um, and I counted up the book today, and we have almost doubled the amount of zoning since last year this time. So, things have really picked up since last year. Are you talking about the book? We uh, had a fairly quiet month, I guess, as far as fire service. We only had four runs on the fire side of it. Uh, one was electrical fire, one grass fire. Uh, one mutual aid to station 12 on a wildland fire, and uh, one search and rescue for a missing child. One motor vehicle accident, and we had 18 medical runs. All in all, it was fairly quiet. Um, 
Bye. Okay, Bob, you gave some to your report. Yep. No we, uh, <coughs> the roads continue to be worked, the ones that we have uh, scheduled. Um, two of them that are in progress is still 56th Street between Curb and New Casa, and uh, Wedge and Resale Swan, uh, M82 to 86, uh, in the city of M82 and Pear, and Pear between 86 and 97. Um, I know that people generally are not overly fond of Chip and Seal. I'm not fond of Chip and Seal. I live off of 56th Street and I did that road. But it does buy us lots of time on the road. Um, working with Kelly, I've gotten to understand how road millage maintenance works and how we do things here in the county. I think I can articulate that very well. What I'm absolutely clueless to is how you get road construction money. But I'm going to find out next time that we go to do this. I'm going to be real smart about road construction money because I got to get inside with the town, with not only the township but with the county, and figure out how they get allocations from Lansing to do road construction. Because I will tell you, just like I told the folks at Bill's Lake this past weekend, what we're doing is putting very nice band-aids on things. We are not fixing the roads. We are we are buying time. We are buying. You know, we're making a road that's designed to last 10 years, making it last 15 years. Uh, one gentleman asked me, he said, well, why can't you do all this stuff around Bill's Lake the right way? And I said, because I don't have $400,000, and if I did, then we wouldn't maintain another road in the township for three years. So it's a cost-effective measure of what we're doing, and uh, it is working very well. Um, I still have two roads that are under, that are two projects that are under uh, work yet, and that's the two that I mentioned. We have closed two out. Uh, Kelly is going to finish up all of the road construction before he starts the real work of paving and everything else on the pathway project. Some of you may notice that there are three areas that he's been working on Croton Hardy Drive, and he's doing a very nice job on those. Um, when he gets to paving, it'll go very, very fast. But our concern was getting our road maintenance projects done first, and that's what we're doing. That's all I have now. Thanks, Bill. Um, it's been a good and interesting month with the library. <laughs> been diving in, learning a lot. I really appreciate the help I've got from Chris and Deb and understanding the library accounting methods and things like that. We are starting up a new opportunity this month. Starting next week, we're taking appointments for one-on-one -on -one tutoring with technology, whether it's learning how to use library ebooks, download the library music, or just setting up a new computer, we have appointments available on Wednesdays that you can sign up for at the library. Very good. Some of that open. Well, I ended up with uh, 65 registered kids for the season. Um, we averaged about 20 per day. The one thing that we noticed this year is the kids this year are getting younger than what I had normally in the past. So this tells me that this program is still needed, that the little kids are coming up. So, um, the check I got from Walmart, most of it was used for the auction, which the kids loved, and they really want to do again next year. Uh, we had items like scooters, backpacks for school, um, big bag of snack items. Golf, uh, disc golf, and many other fun things. We ended up with a total of 37 items that the kids got to auction off with their fun money. Um, the carnival was a big hit. They loved that instead of renting the phones and things. Uh, they had games. Each kid went home with a great big bag of prizes from the carnival. The animal control came out and did a site visit, and the kids had to learn how to groom an animal, and they all went home with leashes. And, and then we bring on a bunch of pets. And, um, then we have popcorn and snow cones, thanks to Bob and me at the campground. And we had pizza and tacos, and then we gave away the two bikes. Where was that? Where was the pizza? Where was the pizza? There was a piece of pizza left. Well. Um, so next year is the 10th anniversary of this program. And so I'm hoping to do some bigger and better things with the kids next year. So if anyone has any ideas, let me know.
Well enough, okay. Thank you, Tim. Um, okay, uh, next on the agenda is the audit report. We don't have the audit report yet. I talked to Joel from Gabriel, and he's finishing, up, finishing it up, and he'll have it found and delivered by Friday of this week. So then we'll set another meeting to have him come up and roll the audit with us. So we'll post that. It'll be on the internet. So everyone will know about that. When that's going to be. Um, next on the agenda is the bonus um, for the summer rec employees. Tina had a little money left over from the um, fund budget, so she wanted to give the employees a um, bonus for all the good work they've done. And it was really good program this year. Lots of lots of kids. Well, I had budgeted for four people mm -hmm. and I ran the program with three. And yeah. it was for three, so. Yeah. so she's recommending two hundred dollars per the three employees and just need a motion if we decide we want to do that. Or? I would like to I would like to say that I'm totally in favor of doing that. However when we say that we're going to give the employees and the people who are responsible for the summer rec pro program a bonus, I think that this phone ought to be included in that for a bonus also. I think she did a wonderful job, as, as good as you could have ever done, and I think she deserves it like the rest of the staff. That's a good point. Yes. Is there $600 to give, or is there $800 to give? <laughs> Make it so. What's, what's, left in, <laughs> what's left in your budget? There's a lot of money left in my budget. I, I, you know, I had a lot of good donations and I saved a lot of money for this program. Then I will make a motion that all of the employees that made our summer rec program a uh, success get a $200 bonus. I'll second that. You earned it. Thank you for your dedicated service. Mm -hmm. I, I love the program. Okay. <coughs> well, we have to roll call. Yes, ma'am. W8, yes. Chris Hadley? Yes. Okay. Um, I think we actually have to pass one of these resolutions, sir, both of them. We have to pass them. I'm sorry. Yes, we do. Yeah. We have to make motion because we skipped yeah. that one. We skipped that part of it. Sorry, we have to go back to that. Do we do number 21 before yes. we do 20? Yes. That looks like it to me. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'll make a res um, make a motion that we pass resolution 2013 021. I'll okay. second. Okay. Debbie Wright, yes. Dr. Green? Yes, ma'am. Chris Hadley? Yes. We need a motion to pass 2013-20 Fire Protection Special Assessment District confirmation. I'll make a motion that we pass resolution 2013-020. Okay, Yes, ma'am. W8, yes. Chris Hadley? Yes. Okay. We have a FEMA report from Abby Watkins, <coughs> Matt Modernization from, um, Assess a Community's Mapping Needs. I'm not sure, oh sure, this is the first I've seen this, Kenan. What did we know? That's the, that's the FEMA flood map update thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so that's from Abby that I don't have. I thought it was that. No, evidently then he didn't give it to me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so this right, is just so for this, our information. This right, that the map is not that, <coughs> but they are working on it, and that's just to so you guys know that okay. that map will be being updated. Jim, that flight map is... 
So this has to do with the flood plane? Well, what will happen with that once they, once they update it? You have to understand, FEMA uses that for uh, insurance purposes. Yep. And it has a great impact on folks because if you're not in a flood zone, all of a sudden you show up in a flood zone, guess what? Now you've got to get flood insurance. So it's very critical that they do it right. And, and again, there is some there is some discussion over what the benchmark is that they're supposed to be working on. It was a big bone of contention on Bill Flake on the weekend when I attended their association meeting. But it's being addressed. Uh, it's being addressed. It's okay. And I know Morgan because I know Morgan Morgan talked to Jim and I about this stuff for what, for what we knew about this stuff. And then he also did something very smart. He got a hold of Abby Watkins too. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so. I don't need that one another day. It's going to be a public meeting on that. Okay. Because it is important. Yeah, very important. Very important. Okay. When we find out what the next and that is. Okay. 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 Cool. okay. The next part of this meeting, I'm going to hand over to Bill Nadelman, and it's the fire chief appointment. Thank you. Before I get started, can I make a motion that you run all of our board meetings so we get out of here at seven thirty? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll second that. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, first before I get started, I'd like to thank all the members that served on the uh, selection nominating team uh, that uh, did a search for the fire chief. There were uh, eight members, uh, Tommy Birdzo, Ed Duchemin, Morgan, Deb Wright, Al Duchemin, Brian Toth, and Brandon Dorby. A lot of you guys are here. I, thanks for being here. We appreciate that. These guys did a wonderful, wonderful job. We also had the assistance of uh, Evie Watkins. She served as a uh, kind of a uh, advisor to us. Not one person missed one meeting. That gives you an idea of their dedication. We went through an extremely thorough process to come up with this recommendation. I will read a letter here in a minute that will explain that. Uh, I don't know how many of you have taken a job interview and had eight people sit in front of you and you didn't know them and you're applying for a job. The candidates that came, all of them, both of them, sat and looked at eight people they had never, well they knew a lot and they didn't know all. We get down to two outstanding candidates, extremely outstanding. Either one could be a success with the Croton Township. Uh, both candidates are here tonight. Uh, Jason over here. Jason, stand up. Uh, Jason uh, is a captain at the uh, Nuevo Fire Department. He's been there for many years. And uh, outstanding candidate. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. And Billy, of course, uh, stand up. Billy, uh, you all know Billy. Uh, handled the interview process extremely well, as did Jason. And you guys both, both made this choice for our recommendation very, very difficult. Uh, thank you, Billy. Okay, I'm going to read a letter now, and again, it's going to have the process that we went through. It's very short. It's on one page. Uh, and I'll give you, Deb, when I'm done, I'll give this to you. Okay. After conducting a detailed, thorough, and extensive search, extensive search for a new township fire chief, our appointed search committee is now ready to make a recommendation as to who we feel will best meet the board's needs, the need of the boards, the firefighters, and the citizens of Croton Township. For the record, listed below are some of the processes we completed prior to making this recommendation. We advertised as per standard procedure. We contacted the Director of Nuevo County Emergency Services for support. Of course, that's Abby. We met with the current Croton Township firefighters and asked for their input regarding their expectations of the new fire chief. Likewise, we asked for input on areas of concern and dislikes. We carefully reviewed all residents. We interviewed two outstanding candidates. We conducted a background check on both of our top two candidates, consisting of checking with the Michigan State Offenders Registry, the PSOR. We contacted the Nuevo County Sheriff's Department. We contacted references provided by each candidate. And I can say, and it's in this letter, both candidates were totally capable of qualifying under all above. 
Having completed all of the above, the committee is pleased to recommend that Billy Westgate be extended an offer to become the new fire chief of Croton Township. It's Shirley is from the committee. And again, thanks to both candidates. Uh, thanks to the committee. Thank you. Do you have any questions before I sit down? Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. It was a pleasure having professional assistance yeah. with that with that process. Thank you. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity. So, do we need a motion to appoint? Thanks for appointing. Thanks for appointing. I would I would make the motion to appoint Billy Westgate Fire Chief for Croton Township. And I will proudly second it.